And a very special guest with us, uh, first time in studio from Culinary Crossroads, Larry Dickerson. Welcome to the program. Thanks, guys. It's yeah, great, yeah, it's great yeah. to be here. You didn't, you, you didn't have a catchphrase ready on, on deck? I was going to go, bum, ba, da, da. Hey! There it is. All you need oh. is love. <laughs> there it is. I love that. Are you a big Beatles fan? I'm a huge Beatles fan. Mm. Man, yeah. we were talking upstairs about the Beatles, and he was he was there for the Beatles when they <laughs> when they started. You know, when they started, they, they came out. And what, what was the album they came out with first that you said you liked? Well, I liked them all. I followed them all the way uh, through. I was telling him at, at that particular time you'd – buy albums at grocery stores and so mm. we, we'd go Whoa. to the big town in anderson to the pay less and my mom would shop and i'd go to the aisles and then every time there'd be a new beatles album that would come out i'd bring it home put it on to the turntable and play both sides until i'd memorized the whole album and i was just telling about the big shift where you know they we're doing uh she loves you yeah 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 and and then they go to help and the next thing you know here comes like rubber soul like what the hell is this happening yeah. here and and rubber soul revolver sergeant peppers yeah it was really a it was a really cool time and at the same time i'm growing up i'm going through adolescence and these guys finally just like you know what we're, we're gonna play what we want to play yeah uh, and it was a really tumultuous time in the country and they were just sort of you know, just um, breaking it up, saying we're not going to play the way you used to play it. So I'm a big, big, big Beatles fan. There is also something about, like you were talking about, like going to the store and buying an album. There's something I feel like people miss out today, especially like young people, about yeah. not having like the physical music, like going like, you know, whether it was a record or you like it, like it was like tapes for me, but you know, it was like going and getting something where there was like a physical con, you know, tactile contact. Like you were saying, you were learning the lyrics from the, like the liner notes, you know, like that sort of thing. I feel like we, we lose a step with streaming. Right. And there's the art. The art was like Artwork, a big yeah. thing. I, it kind of like transitioned to music videos. Right. But like right. art was like huge in like the, the CDs. And just the whole social strata that was with it as well. Like it, and, you know, in, in those particular times when you're off to college and you're hanging out and you're going over to a party or somebody's house, one of the things I used to love to do is say, Hey, where, where are your albums? Mm, yeah. And, and, you know, party be getting going and just go through there and yeah. start seeing learn what, see little, what they had there and said, Hey, you mind if I throw this, throw this on? And you know, that's a lost, that's a lost art. Oh, it just doesn't. Yeah. You gotta learn a, a bit about a person doing this. Like, so like Zach, when he goes over to people's houses, he goes through their medicine cabinet the same way. And he learns, <laughs> he, he learns, learns about people that way. You tell a lot, tell a lot. More from music or the medicine? I mean, I listen to music while I'm eating the medicine. Uh, <laughs> oh, <okay. but laughs> Captain's always got to take his cut. <laughs> yeah. I like how he, like, I thought originally he was just looking in the medicine cabinet. <laughs> now he's just taking pills. No, I kind of used it as a way to, like, read the bones. <laughs> like, you know, I eat some of them. I look at some of them on a plate. Okay, and, yeah, yeah. Okay. Divine from it. That makes sense. Now, if you want to play, like, an album from somebody's, like, music deck, you have to know their password to their phone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you can't. You get their face to unlock it. Yeah. Like, yeah. You have to, yeah. I like that. You could go to their music deck. I can just pull out a record. We don't have that anymore. A few years ago, uh, during the during the summer, it was really fun. Uh, we'd go out and get with folks, and you'd be around, you know, boating or campfires or whatever, and bring out the portable speaker. And and so uh, I'd play this game, say, okay, you're up. Uh, and you'd be queued up. I'd say, okay, come up with your song. So you're queuing it up, and everybody's mm. going to say, get ready to go. And it's really interesting because it's sort of like giving everybody a chance to get their genre up. Yeah. And then they, they listen to the other music with a, some intensity because it's like, Oh man, LD, I didn't know that you, you really like that, that group. Oh yeah. That's been one of my favorites. So mm -hmm. it's a really cool thing in terms of socializing that takes the music and still makes it part of it. Right. In the past when you had albums, like they're throwing that album on, I guess we're, I guess we're going with the Beatles tonight mm -hmm. or, you know, we're going to go uh soft country or, rap or whatever the case may be and mm -hmm. that you know you just you don't have that as much anymore i've learned a lot about music just from working in so many kitchens over the years and then people because i was always i'm the first to tap out because like i've seen music fights get pretty intense you know or like somebody who's <laughs> like no i want to play my music you know so i'm much more of a like a passive observer when it comes to music i'm gonna play whatever you know like i don't want to get into an argument over it but yeah I, I definitely listened to so many genres of music i don't think i ever would have kind of found organically if it wasn't for working in a kitchen and someone's like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna put this on 
Mm -hmm. We're going to listen to this. Yeah. Yeah. Today in today's world, you know, if you get on on whatever your channel is like mine, Spotify, a lot of times you'll just take a particular group and say, I'm I'm just going to go with that genre. Mm -hmm. It'll, it'll bring you back to listen to that. Oh yeah. I remember how much I really enjoyed that. And, Mm -hmm. um, out at, um, our, our country club, if you will, we have a bocce tournament. So it's a bunch of older folks that are out there playing bocce on Thursday nights and drinking and having a heck of a time. And, nice. and I've, I've been self nominated myself for the music person. So, hey. I'll, so I'll, I'll bring it, I'll bring it out there and you throw that on. And all of a sudden, you know, the 67 year old is 23. That's out there dancing around or whatever. Yeah. So it's, a, I, I love, love music and, and the Beatles were, they really were their foundation point for me. Yeah. That's crazy. You said you're 67. You seem you seem to uh, like have a, such a youthful energy. He's not 67. No, I'm 65. Oh, but, 65. but that was in 67 when I was oh. when I was 10 years old. So gotcha. you know, it's like going on some 10 year old's kids' uh, head at that time and watching the Beatles yeah, go through yeah. there. So I like that. Like Dyke's like that seems like a lie. He's like, well, it is. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. Yeah. But, th- but thank you. Yeah, I, you know, you're. You're as young as you decide to be. I, I really believe it.